So we still have a few weeks until All Elite Wrestling's All Out show, about two months until their primetime show premiere on TNT October 2nd from the Capital One Arena in D.C., so got to find stuff to talk about in the meantime. Uh, Cody Rhodes this past week was on Busted Rope Open Radio, and he said some interesting things, got a lot of people to react, so I wanted to actually see what the heck he said and then uh, read it and respond to it, and that's what I'm going to do now. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Cody Rhodes told Busted Open this week that he hates the term casual fan because he believes it's, quote, Vernacular to describe wrestling that is based on the Monday Night Wars. Hmm. So my focus is always the base that built AEW, and that base, if you've seen it, you get it, and if you haven't seen it, it's just something that you have to see and feel. Bully, Ray, knows what I'm talking about. Because there's a lot of confidence that sometimes can get misplaced for arrogance on my half or the elite's behalf, but I've seen the power! If I was saying it like Cody. But I've seen the power. I've seen it. And that's why I want to focus on them first and foremost. There's people who are plenty critical of what AEW does, and instead of signal boosting that, I'd rather a hundred of fans that we have in that base than that one sulky son of a bitch that's not coming on board anyways. You guys know that first way to fail is to try and please everyone. But I gotta take care of the people who brought us to the dance in the first place, and I think that will be appealing on a global level." Unquote. It's interesting. The interpretation that I saw from a lot of different sources, fans, and wrestling media was that Cody was basically saying they didn't want to appeal to mainstream fans and casual fans, that they weren't going to appeal to mainstream and casual fans. They were going to focus on the hardcore fan base, the guys that they've already got, because they know they've got them and try to be as successful as they can with them. Kind of sounds like it there. And I guess here's my thing, especially when you're a new company. As much as anything else, it is important to establish an identity. And if you don't have an identity, you have nothing. And if we use WWE as a quick example here, just a quick example, because we should be able to evaluate AEW based off of its merits or faults, not always have to compare to somebody else, that's weak shit. But I'm using this as an example. Part of the issue with WWE is they changed their name back in 2002. Remember, World Wildlife Federation uh, Foundation sued them, won, and then WWE was getting the F out, and a lot of the fun went with it. But more so than that, almost damn 20 years later after that name change, you still find all types of people that call it the WWF. It's not the WWF. It hasn't been for almost 20 damn damn years, but people are still calling it that. There is a bit of a branding and identity problem there. Having an identity is critical. It doesn't mean that everybody's going to like it. It doesn't mean that everybody wants to associate with it. But tis better to be known for something than known for nothing. And I get that. And I do think at the early stages, it is incredibly important for all elite wrestling to establish an identity, whatever that identity is going to be. I am not here to pass judgment on that today. And ultimately, there is definitely validity to wanting to strengthen your base as much as you possibly can to make sure that they are energized, that they are motivated, and that you have their support beyond question. It's somewhat similar to politics. Before you go out there reaching for the stars, you've got to have a foundation. You've got to have a base. You've got to have that base excited before you try to draw new people under the tent. So, so, so I get that. You know, the whole thing talking about what they've built um, and then the whole thing about when well, you see it and you feel it, you know, that does kind of come across like Mark BS. Let's just be real. You know, and while I certainly have no love loss for list, 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 fuck Cody Rhodes, the reality is, is there are bigger things at play here. And there is the opportunity, the chance, the potential to have another big North American professional wrestling company. And believe me, I am down for that on so many levels. So many levels. It's better for me as a fan, better for all of you as a fan, better for the talents in the business. It's better for this channel. It's just a win-win situation all the way across the board. So at this point in time, there would be absolutely no reason 
regardless of how much of a piece of crap personally Cody Rhodes is, to sit there and want All Elite Wrestling to fail or for me to sit here on some type of weak-ass pedestal and knock them down every chance I got. There's nothing to be accomplished there. Nothing good will come from that for anybody and selfishly, most especially, myself. So I want to see these guys do well. I want to see them succeed because if they succeed, it means so many positive things in so many different ways. But, but I got to take issue with what Cody is saying here, talking about you can't please everyone and that's your first way to fail. I don't disagree with that. No matter what you're going to do, you're never going to please everyone. That is absolutely the case. There are probably people out there in the world that hate Mr. Rogers. Like, how the hell could you hate Mr. Rogers? But I'm sure there are people that do. Again, you can't please everyone. I agree with that. But we must look at the current reality of all elite wrestling and where they're at and understand that while, yes, it is very important to have that established solid base and to have them energized and have them motivated and continue to grow and build that loyalty so they will follow you through thick and thin, the reality is for Cody, the Bucks, Omega, Jericho, JR, everybody involved with this company, if you think that you currently have enough of a hardcore fan base to consistently support these pay-per-views along with supporting month or weekly primetime television to the level that you're going to need in order to be successful, you've got another thing coming. You cannot sit there and build a national and international wrestling brand in this day and age with what you're trying to do with a couple of hundred thousand fans. It's just not going to work. Again, I emphasize it is just not going to work. Now, it helps that you have a very loyal and passionate fan base to where you will have more of them fork over money for your bigger pay-per-views than what TNA used to get back in their better days. But still, even back then, TNA at its peak was getting 1, 1.2, 1.3, sometimes 1.4, 1.5 million viewers. If you're all elite wrestling, you pray to God and hope and wish that you could get that level of viewership. And based off of the numbers that I've seen with some of the shows that have been streaming on Bleacher Report Live, I'm incredibly concerned. Some of the free shows, you're getting 100, 150, 200, maybe 250,000 people to check it out at any one time. In order for you to be able to be successful on national primetime television on TNT, you're going to need at least a million viewers relatively quickly. You can't go out there in October, draw half a million TV viewers and think that's a great success. It's not. It will be the start, but if you don't bring those numbers up very soon and you continue to hover around 500, 600, 700,000 viewers, your show is going to be not for long on TNT in prime time. I promise you that. Wrestling to me, as much as anything, when it is most success successful is when it's a variety show. It has something for everyone. Back in the 90s, during the Monday Night Wars, WWE had something for everyone. You had guys that could wrestle. You had guys that could do high-impact shit. You had great larger-than-life personalities. You had women showing their bodies. You had outlandish skits and crap and all of this other stuff. WCW had a lot of those same things. And that's why, for that period of time, both of those companies were incredibly damn successful. And then you had ECW, who was a success in and of themselves, but by and large, for the most part, always was, at least to me, just a super duper on steroids indie fed. They had a loyal fan base that would follow them to the end of time and did. But you were never going to grow much beyond that. That wasn't in Paul Heyman's wheelhouse. It just, it just wasn't the identity of the company. And while ECW was successful, and ECW eventually got on national television, remember ECW on TNN, they also got a crappy time slot, they got one hour, there were just a lot of things wrong with it. They were drawing about a million viewers, if I recall correctly, 0.9 million to 1.1 million, usually around the average. But ultimately, they were never growing and expanding their fan base because their product was extremely violent and some might say kind of trashy. And at some point in time, if ECW wanted to survive long-term outside of getting Paul Heyman as far away from the finances as possible, 
you had to get to a point in time where you had to change some of your identity and you had to figure out ways to appeal to a larger audience. ECW didn't. It's one of the reasons that they ultimately failed. Sorry if that gets you in your emotions, but that's the reality. All elite wrestling cannot fall into that same trap. And here's my thing is, I'm not saying ignore your base. I'm not saying that. But at some point in time, similar to politics, you must go outside of your base. That's why they always talk about, you know, this base plus independents plus moderates. You have to figure out ways to appeal to them. You have to figure out ways to win them, at least in certain key strategic areas. Obama did it in 08 and 12. Trump did it in 2016. You have to figure out a way to bring enough of those independents and moderates under your tent in order to win the election. And if you don't do that, you have no chance. It's similar here with all elite wrestling. I, I dispute this notion that because you don't want people with negativity around, look, this is the time to have people be negative. This is the time to hear the constructive criticism because you're starting off with a clean slate. Who gives a crap? You screw up, okay. Learn from it and get better. When you hear that a little bit, what Cody was saying, it almost sounds like they don't want any criticism and they don't want any feedback. If you're not making mistakes, you're missing out on opportunities to learn, Cody. You need that message, apparently. Your wife does. Bad Boy Joey Janela and so many other people with your company and just professional wrestling in general, and frankly, probably throughout the world. It's okay to make mistakes. It's what you do when you make those mistakes. How do you grow from them? How do you learn? How do you improve? How do you not repeat those mistakes? That's what should matter more. And to say that you don't want this person because of their negativity or this and that, to me just sounds like you want to live in your own little BS bubble and you don't want to do serious business. You just kind of want to circle jerk around and toil around in just barely relevant mediocrity. Like, if you're going to do this, you can't half-ass it. If you're going to do this, you must go all the way. It doesn't mean ignoring the people that help bring you to this dance and bring you to this moment. But you will need more than that in order to succeed long-term. And this is what concerns me about Cody and the Bucks and so forth. Because I don't know if they have enough of a grasp here to understand now with the role and positions that they have and the position that they and their company are in, how much the landscape and the perspective has changed. You cannot go whining about every little criticism that you get. You can't run from it. You can't fear it. If anything, you got to embrace it. Embrace the hate, as they say. But you've got to go out there and get casual and mainstream fans. If you want to do big business and you really want to leave a legacy on the wrestling business, that's what you have to do. Going after your hardcore fan base, you know what you're doing? You're only feeding into that same cycle. You're only feeding into that same base. And no matter what happens, eventually that base starts to dwindle and diminish. You must pick up new fans. If you're not growing, you are dying. It is true in life. It is true in the business world. And I sure as hell hope to God that what Cody Rhodes was saying was more kind of sanctimonious, appease the hardcore masses BS than the actual strategy and reality of this company. Because if what he said is a reflection of what this company's vision and strategy is going to be, that should be very concerning for all of you. This is about big picture here, and I know a lot of people, especially as human beings, especially as wrestling fans, can't see past their own BS to get past their own selfishness and their own needs and desires. But the fact is, is I could tune into a two-hour, three-hour wrestling show, and there might be a couple of things that aren't for me, but if there are plenty of things that are, okay, shit, it's good. It's the problem is when almost none of it is for me, that's when it's a problem. Or when all of it is only for a small, certain segment of overall wrestling fandom, that's where the problem comes in because you will never get bigger. You will never get better. You will never grow. You will never increase your overall bottom line. All that's going to happen is you're going to perform the same. Then your performance is going to start to go down. You're going to make less money. You're going to increase your expenses and it's going to be doom and disaster. And as inconvenient of a truth as this might be, casual and mainstream fans still exist, Cody Rhodes. And you must go out there and get them because if you don't, your company will not nearly be as successful as it should be and it might damn well fail.